Hello and welcome to the Pork and Knuckles Show, where we take a bite out of movies. Like, literally. The problem is, today there is not going to be much biting involved because Bill and I, we can't meet in person because of the corona lockdown in Austria, which is why we have to do a special episode at the moment. But given that tomorrow is going to be the second of Advent, we think that this is a perfect time to relax and talk about Christmas. And this, today, in this special episode, and I swear, the Kevin uh, Home Alone franchise is going to start next Saturday. But this is our top 10, or top 5 per person, Christmas list. Knuckles, would you start? I will, I will. So, hello. And the first one, The Last Samurai. I loved that movie. It was epic. It's a great storyline. Hans Zimmer, superb. Like, the guy should have a Christmas album. I think it will be a timeless classic. Also, the movie makes you realize that traditions are important and the roles that the samurai had to play in the Japanese philosophy is brilliant. Just brilliant. And the scene that I loved the most was when Katsumoto was about to die and he finally saw the cherry blossom plant blossom. It was an amazing, amazing scene. So that's my fifth best Christmas movie. Okay. Um, I'm going to start. I, I actually have to say I'm starting off with a cheat. Because we have our top five Christmas movies. But the first thing that I'm going to include is an episode from a TV series. But I count it as a short film. Because it's an episode of the awesome Tales from the Crypt. And this is the second episode of the first season. It's called All Through the House. And um, it's basically a slasher movie story where a woman is trapped inside of her own house, but an estranged killer is trying to hunt her down, trying to chop her up with his axe, and he is dressed up as Santa Claus. And this is an intense thriller actually that was on the index of bad movies in in germany so um movies that are too violent uh, this was basically banned in germany for for quite some time actually and it does feature a little bit of gore but the thing is that i want to say with the um tales from the crypt series for all the people who do not know about it is the producers are richard donner walter hill joel silver and robert zemeckis so um this is an all-star episode and in this special episode, All Through the House, we have a script by Fred Decker, who made the awesome Monster Squad movie, and Robert Zemeckis of freaking um, uh, Back to the Future fame directed this episode. So this is intense, gory, thrilling, and all of that in 20 minutes. Interesting. Uh, interesting is all I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> so my fourth... <clears throat> Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Normally, I don't watch comic movies, but this was pure, pure entertainment. I got my special noise-canceling headphones and I had a little projector, turned my whole TV, well, living room, into the closest thing to a cinema that I could. Action, amazing. Soundtracks were good. Pure entertainment. The fight with King Ping at the end was brilliant. This was a superb, entertaining movie. A great, great Christmas comes in at number four. Wow, I, I, I have to watch this. But I'm, um, if, if you found my fifth pick crazy, you're going to be in some trouble. Because my number four is El Dia de la Bestia. It's a Spanish movie by um, Alex de la Iglesia, who you can call the Spanish version of Quentin Tarantino, Robert... Um, uh, Rodriguez or or uh, Takashi Miike and what he does is incredible he has um, 
such a great talent to make awesome characters who make a, a strange, surreal feeling and who also has this, this cult classic um, look to his movies. This is basically a movie that tells you the Antichrist is going to be born on Christmas Eve and a few people are going out and try to kill the Antichrist before he gets born. And this is so surreal. It's superbly entertaining. It has this, this um, horror comedy mixture of where the comedy comes from, how surreal and strange everything is from the dialogue to the setup to the characters. Alex de la Iglesia is a brilliant master of, of uh, making these uh, sorts of movies, like his Cream and for Pecto, which is amazing. And this is one of my favorite films of his, and it's a Christmas movie, and so I like to watch that right now. Cool, cool, cool. The third one, this is it, the, the Gladiator. It is a brilliant movie. Like, the theme song is amazing. The journey of Maximus is superb. It's, like, in the end, justice is served. Rome is, and this ended up making me read about Marcus Aurelius's philosophy, self-restraining reasoning. It's so cool. This movie had a massive, massive lasting impact. I, th I see it every year, and I think I've seen it eight times outside the Christmas season, and brilliant. Just a brilliant, brilliant number three. What does this film have to do with Christmas? It's a great Christmas movie. It's a great, great family movie. A family movie where Sanpai heads Sanpai getting it. chopped off and... No, it, absolutely not. This is mental. What is your third one? Okay, my third one is actually a little bit more Christmassy, and I'm, maybe we start with movies that you know right now. My number three pick this time... It's an mm. awesome, awesome masterpiece. I love uh, the directing style of Joey Dante. He's one of the most talented uh, American... Directors, I love the fact how Joey Dante always balances um, his comedic elements and his horror elements. I love the way how uh, Gizmo and all these gremlins look, how they work, how they interact. I love the puppetry. I love the way how they interact with their environment. I love the, the, the whole concept of don't get them wet, don't feed them after midnight. Um, and I think this is one of the most entertaining movies that I have seen that are centered around Christmas. And by the way, for, for the people watching this um, from America, this is actually the movie who got the PG-13 rating um, established in America because the, oh. the things that Gremlin shows... Um, usually before that, we had the PG rating, which something like Poltergeist already... Oh, okay, this is PG. Interesting. And then the R rating, and there was nothing in between. And because of the fact what Gremlins show, Steven Spielberg actually made the MPAA create a new rating, which is the PG-13 that we now know for this movie. And it's superbly entertaining. I love it. All right. All right. That is quite epic. All right. Number two. Number two. This is it. This is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I was 11 years old. And okay. When I watched Diagon Alley, it was so cool. The feast in Hogwarts is superb. It's like, wow. I think David Heyman did a brilliant job of visualizing the characters. This is so cool. Hagrid, the train scene, the frog, platform nine and three quarters, man. King's Cross Station in London. It's just so cool. It's a great, great movie. I absolutely love it. And that's why it's number two. Awesome. My number two is something I think um, you were expecting this movie to show up along the line at some point. Of course, it's the brilliant masterpiece, Die Hard. <sighs> Bruce Willis is an awesome action actor. He does a brilliant job. The thing um, that I actually had the, the most trouble of selecting for this top five list is whether I wanted to put um, Die Hard or Die Hard 2 on this spot because both of these movies are great Christmas presents for every family. They have great action, great one-liners, um, and they're just Alan Rickman. I think it was Alan Rickman as um, the censored villain in the first movie because in the English original version, he 
But in the German version, they changed his uh, background so he's no longer a German terrorist, which I like. They even changed his name. Um, and I think the, the performance of Alan Rickman in this movie is, even though I'd say the second part maybe have a little better action sequences, I, I mean, the, the ice scene is holy shit, um, but... What Bruce Willis does in this movie, what Alan Rickman does, it's a thrilling, it's a compact, claustrophobic action thriller. One of the best that Hollywood has ever produced. Fair enough. That is a timeless classic. It's a Christmas classic, but I didn't see a single Santa in it. So interesting. My favorite and the best Christmas movie ever. Uh, I will tell you now. The Intouchables, the French movie. And it is such a a great movie especially with the message that it's not trying to normalize disability it's just that it's showing from a disabled person's point of view that they just they want to be treated normally without any sympathy and the movie introduced me to Inodi he is a great piano player the first scene just captures you when the police stops him and the person is completely paralyzed from neck below but he helps his driver get out of the police trying to arrest him, ends up getting a police escort to the hospital, and then they just go on. It's just brilliant. It is such a good movie. It has everything, comedy, drama, all emotions. This is a superb movie. You have to watch it. Yes. Great, great family movie. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, was my was my absolute favorite movie the year it came out. Mm. But for my number one, the best Christmas movie that has ever ever been made and i know that the die hard is kind of a yeah christmas movie because it's set around christmas you you um said that there are not enough santas in it there will be a santa in my top one pick and this is silent night deadly night part two and this is the most important thing it's silent night deadly night part two not the enormous classic Silent Night, Deadly Night, starring Linnea Quigley, which has a killer dressed as Santa go around, chop people up, which actually has one of the most awesome um, cover artworks that I have uh, ever seen by Rick Melton on uh, the German Blu-ray. But this is the timeless classic. Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2 is crap, really. Half of this movie is recycled footage from the first movie. So they basically have all the movie uh, being told in flashbacks, including footage from the first one. Even scenes that the character explaining the scenes was never in. Also, Eric Freeman, the guy who plays the lead character in Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, is one of the worst actors you have ever seen on stage. He is so campy. He is so over the top. He is so exaggerated, up to a thousand. And it's so much fun watching him butcher every single line that he uh, has to utter. This is the most entertaining thing you can watch around Christmas. Interesting, interesting. We'll let the audience decide, because definitely yes. I'm going to win this. Like, you had to put Die Hard in, which is like, interesting. Um, all right, right, people, that's it. That's our top five. Let us know who's won and which is the best movie. Give it a try. Exactly. Tell us in the comments and definitely uh, check back to our channel next Saturday mm -hmm. when we will start with our main feature of Home Alone. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and share the video with all other Christmas or whatever my picks were movie enthusiasts. Have a great day and thanks again for watching. Take care.